The coyote, a close relative of the wolf, is a canine that is native to North America. Its ancestors lived 5 million years ago during the Pliocene, but it wasn't until the Pleistocene that modern-day coyotes emerged in North America. 10,000 years ago, they were restricted by the dense forests of North America. They lived in the open plains, mostly in America's west. But as the forests were filled, opening up more grasslands, the coyotes spread elsewhere. Their closest rivals, the wolves, were heavily persecuted, opening up a niche that the smaller coyotes could now occupy. There was no stopping them. And now, they have spread to the eastern seaboard and are found as far north as Alaska and Canada's Alberta and as far south as Costa Rica. But they haven't yet crossed the infamous jungle of the Darien Gap to infiltrate South America. Here we ask the question, what would happen if coyotes took over South America? These canines have been the center of Native American folklore, often being depicted as deceptive tricksters owing to their intelligence. Their success across the North American continent can be attributed largely to their versatility and ability to adapt to a range of habitats. They are mostly carnivorous, eating deer, rabbits, hares, rodents, birds, reptiles, amphibians, fish, and invertebrates. They are social individuals, with males weighing anywhere between 8 and 20 kilograms, or 18 to 44 pounds and females 7 to 18 kilograms, or 15 to 40 pounds. They either live as a tight family unit or as a pack of unrelated individuals. Although individual coyotes tend to hunt small prey like rodents, those that hunt in pairs or packs have the ability to take down much larger animals. Depending on where the coyotes live will determine their main diet. Those living in Death Valley feast upon hawk moth caterpillars and beetles, whereas in the open plains, they may target pronghorn sheep. With coyotes considered a species of least concern by the IUCN, and all 19 subspecies being widespread throughout North America, there have been sightings of them much further south. It seems like they are on the cusp of entering South America, but would they survive there? And what effect would they have on the ecosystem? Coyotes are now found in every U.S. state, except for Hawaii. They have taken advantage of the destruction humans have caused, such as the killing of America's wolves, cougars, and jaguars. But these resilient and versatile canids have managed to colonize new territories all on their own. Unlike the Australian dingo, which hitched a ride on seafarers' ships and landed on foreign shores, coyotes spread out by themselves. They have inhabited Panama since the 1980s and have recently been spotted inside Panama's Darien National Park. Now, the only thing between them and Colombia and South America is crossing the whole of the Darien Gap, which they have yet to pass. However, with deforestation expanding across the jungles of Panama, coyotes are beginning to expand further and further south. Just as they did in North America, these incredible wild dogs are taking advantage of the more open habitats and diminishing tree cover. In just three years, between 2015 and 2018, the coyotes spread southwards by more than 120 miles. But that's not all. Something else is happening that hasn't happened for around 3 million years. Another canine predator is traveling northwards in the opposite direction. The crab-eating fox, which has been dubbed the coyote of South America, is also taking advantage of the changing habitat. Native to South America's savannas and forested regions, this fox made it into Panama in the 1990s. Both the crab-eating fox and the coyote are sharing the same habitat for the first time. The most famous swap in species occurred 2.7 million years ago during the Great American Interchange. This was when the land bridge of Panama first appeared, connecting the two continents and allowing all sorts of different species to travel between both North and South America. But what will happen if coyotes make it further south? If they continue to progress southwards at the same rate they've been doing recently, then it won't be long before coyotes become a common sight across South America. Although this modern-day interchange is a result of habitat destruction by humans and the poaching of other top predators, which has paved the way for coyotes, their presence in South America could be regarded as a good thing. They may help to keep pests in check as individuals often prey on small rodents that can wreak havoc and spread disease. Prior to the formation of the Panama Land Bridge, South America had no canids. 
following the Great American Interchange, a number of species from the dog family evolved and made a home in South America. These include seven species of fox, as well as the short-eared dog, bush dog, and maned wolf. Living alongside these other canids would likely cause friction. The maned wolf is currently the largest canid in South America and weighing in at 20 to 30 kilograms or 44 to 66 pounds. It is larger than most coyotes. More omnivorous than coyotes, maned wolves consume a large proportion of vegetation, including fruits. They also hunt small and medium-sized prey such as rabbits, birds, reptiles, and fish. Their feces have been shown to contain remnants of anteaters, bush dogs, and peccaries, although it is unclear whether these animals were hunted or scavenged by the maned wolf. Either way, these species would be considered prey for coyotes, should they live there, and therefore maned wolves could be in direct competition with coyotes regarding food. Whilst the maned wolf lives a largely solitary existence, the social dynamics of coyotes would make them more dominant when it comes to hunting. Working together as a pack, they are more likely to be successful in their hunts and also capable of taking down larger prey. Maned wolves are only successful in around 20% of their hunts. This may mean that, although smaller than maned wolves, coyotes could outcompete them. Perhaps the smaller bush dog would pose more of a problem for coyotes. They also hunt in packs and are capable of taking down medium to large sized prey. They feed on South America's capybaras, agoutis, peccaries, rias, and even tapirs. They are the most social of all South America's canids and sleep and shelter in hollow logs and burrows, much the same way as coyotes. The larger coyotes may be able to push the bush dogs out of their niche, but with the bush dogs fully established in South America, it may not be that easy. Another formidable predator that lives in South America's dense jungles is the jaguar. These stealthy hunters would be able to take down a coyote with ease. The social structure of coyotes could provide protection in numbers. While some members of the pack rest, others could keep watch, much the same way as wolves. Furthermore, some species avoid others by changing their hunting habits. Jaguars mostly hunt at night, and coyotes are typically crepuscular, hunting for prey during dusk and dawn. This may mean that they are less likely to encounter each other. With their diverse hunting strategies and prey selection, coyotes may be able to avoid South America's jaguars altogether. But what about the prey in South America? It would certainly be a shock to have an unfamiliar predator in the ecosystem. Although prey species are alert to the dangers of South America's native predators, the arrival of coyotes may unbalance the ecosystem. There appears to be enough prey species for coyotes to feast on, and with their diverse diet, they are less likely to struggle than those with specific tastes. But overhunting could spell trouble for South America's fauna. With their ability to adapt to different environments and habitats, it is easy to assume that coyotes would do well in South America. But there may be differences that they are not prepared for. It is known that coyotes successfully kill rattlesnakes. They do this mostly for food, but also to protect their young. In South America, some of the deadliest snakes exist. These include the fertile ants, various pit vipers, and lance heads. These venomous snakes may not be easy to kill as North America's rattlesnakes and could pose a problem to coyotes. Black caiman living in South America's freshwater habitats could also surprise any unsuspecting coyotes. But species that extend their territories learn to adapt to their new environments. Over the thousands of years, that is exactly what coyotes have done, which is why they have become such a successful species. These adaptable canines are found in a huge variety of habitats, including sagebrush steppe, woodlands, prairies, oak savannas, subalpine forests, alpine meadows, open ponderosa pine forests, temperate rainforests, and now urban settings too. South America offers these kinds of habitats as well. Although there are plenty of tropical wetlands, rainforests, and savanna which coyotes aren't accustomed to, the expansive grasslands called the Pampas in the southeast would be suitable for coyotes, as would the Andes Mountains, areas of the Atacama Desert, the open plains, and some of the forests that stretch across the continent. Whilst the Darien Gap still provides a barrier for many species due to the density of its jungle and challenging terrain, it seems both coyotes and South America's crab-eating foxes are on the verge of crossing it. How well they fare on either side is yet to be determined. 
but it is exciting to see such species branching out and making headway where none of their recent ancestors ventured before. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.